Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting equation. We have z to the i equals i to the z. This is kind of interesting because I was looking for a problem idea for Sunday and then this is what I got. So this problem was suggested by actually two viewers Thank you for the suggestion uh, about 11 hours apart. Why don't you do this? And I'm like, okay, this is what I was looking for. I was looking for a problem and let's go. So we have this equation at z to the i equals, I'm not using x, forgive me for that because we always use, almost always use z for the variable here because z represents a plus bi, right? That's the name of the channel. So, we're going to solve this equation here, z to the i equals i to the z. First of all, when I saw this problem, I'm like, okay, there's an obvious solution and that should be it, right? But guess what? I've been surprised. So let's find out. To solve this problem, we're going to, I'm, I'm going to refer to complex exponentiation one more time and we're going to use that formula or identity, whatever you want to call this. And let's see how this goes. So z to the w, if z and w are complex numbers, that can be written as e to the power w ln z. Now, how do you define ln z, right? I mean, if z can be written as absolute value of z times e to the power argument of z, then ln z is basically going to be ln absolute value of z plus the argument of z. Of course, argument of z can be written in infinitely many ways because, say, if the argument of z is pi over 3, it can also be written as pi over 3 plus 2 pi, pi over 3 plus 4 pi. In other words, any multiple of 2 pi can be added to the argument, right? But we're going to try to focus on the principal value, not to complicate things. We can complexify things, but we don't want to complicate them, okay? Cool, cool. Let's proceed. So we have z to the i. By using this, we can kind of write it as e to the power i ln z. And i to the z can be written as e to the power z ln i. And they're supposed to equal, right? So what happens if you set them equal to each other? e to the i ln z equals e to the z ln i. Awesome. From here, can we safely say that i ln z equals z ln i? Okay, you have to be careful here because when we write a complex number like e to the i theta, again, like I said earlier, this will be equivalent to e to the i theta plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. So it is okay to add to the uh, complex number and the argument in a multiple of 2 pi n. When it's multiplied by i, you know, it's just going to be the period is going to be 2 pi n i. So we are actually allowed to add anything like 2 pi n i here because this is what I'm trying to say. You can multiply both sides by e to the power 2 pi n i, which is equivalent to 1 in the complex world. So we're allowed to do it. Why not multiply both sides? Because it wouldn't matter. So we can add that. But that's going to complicate things. So we're going to try to avoid that. But I just want to let you know that this is uh, possible. You can do it. Okay, great. And maybe you're going to let me know how that goes, right? Maybe you're going to get some interesting solutions from there. But this is what we got so far. Keep it simple. I ln z is z ln i. Let's go ahead and do this. Put the z's together. ln z over z equals ln i over i. What are you thinking at this point, right? Isn't there an obvious solution? You probably already knew that, but let's just uh, continue. I'm going to write this as 1 over z ln z. And on the right-hand side, I can kind of write it as 1 over i ln i. But 1 over i is just negative i. Wouldn't that be nice if you could simplify the left-hand side that way? But here's what we're going to do. We're going to write this as 1 over z times ln 1 over z. But that just introduces a negative 1. And then we're going to put a negative sign here. Make sense? Because ln 1 over z is basically ln z to the power negative 1. And by using properties of logs, we can write this as negative 1 ln z. Make sense? That's why we're allowed to kind of bring that uh, negative 1 uh, to the front. Make sense? Okay. Now, so this is what we have. Negative 1 over z ln 1 over z. Basically wrote z as 1 over z to the power negative 1. In other words, right? I kind of turned this into 
uh, 1 over z to the power negative 1, and now move the negative 1 to the front, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Now notice that the left-hand side is pretty good, except let's cancel these two out, and now we're going to get something nicer. 1 over z ln 1 over z equals i ln i. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Set the 1 over z equal to i and just get the solution, get it over with. But let's do the following. From here, you can definitely do that. Say, hey, 1 over z equals i, z equals 1 over i, which is negative i. Uh-oh, were you expecting that? I wasn't. But anyways, that seems to be a solution. Don't worry, we're going to check that. So z equals negative i is a solution. But what about another one that is not that that is actually the most obvious solution. When you saw z to the i equals i to the z, didn't you think that, hey, z equals i seems to be a solution, right? Why is it not coming up here? That's going to be an interesting question. Let's explore further. Now, before we do that, though, I want to check, because I was skeptical too, like, I, don't, I didn't think z equals negative i would work. But here's the thing. We have z to the i equals i to the z, and Let's go ahead and check out negative i. So is it true that negative i to the power i is the same as i to the power negative i? Does that look, I don't want to say real, but does that look true to you? Like, do you think that's possible? Let's check it out. How do you find negative i to the i? Again, we're going to use the uh, formula z to the w equals e to the power w ln z, right? So negative i to the i, in this case z is negative i is going to be e to the power, by the way, that's a z, e to the power i ln negative i. So here's what we need to talk about. What is ln of negative i, right? Well, ln of negative i is ln of the absolute value of negative y, which is ln 1, which is 0, plus the argument of negative i, right? So what is the argument of negative i, right? How do you write that? So we can basically write negative i as e to the power negative i pi over 2, because that will be the angle, right? And then if you align both sides, you're going to get negative i pi over 2. So this can be written as e to the power i times negative i pi over 2. Now i times negative i is negative i squared, which is 1, so we can totally forget it and this becomes e to the power pi over 2. Interesting, right? That's what negative i to the power i is. What about i to the power negative i, though? Again, by using the formula, e to the power negative i ln i, something similar. And then from here, we can basically replace ln i with i pi over 2 by using the same idea. And this will become e to the power negative i squared pi over 2. That will be e to the power pi over 2. So for the principal values, at least, these two are equal, therefore, z equals negative i is a valid solution. Awesome. Now, you can do a little bit of work to make this work and see if you can find z equals i. One of the things that I want to tell you, though, when you solve this problem, when you get something like 1 over z ln 1 over z equals i ln i, for, from here, you're going to basically be getting negative pi over 2. But that's the same thing as negative i ln negative i. Okay, here's the most important part of this, and hopefully you can take it from there. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.